Hello everyone, on this edition of Living Blind with Corey Jackson, you all have asked for it and I'm going to try to bring it to you. I am going to show you in more detail how the Braille screen input works on the iPhone. So set back, relax, and spend the next little bit of time with me while we learn more about Braille screen input. So the Braille screen input videos that were put up not long ago have had thousands of views, thousands of comments, and a lot of people want to know just how does it work? How do you turn it on? So I am going to try to break it down for you in this video and show you more in depth exactly how Braille screen input works. So let's get started. As I have explained when providing answers to quite a few comments, Braille screen input is part of the built-in screen reader on the iPhone called VoiceOver. If you don't have that turned on, you will not have access to the feature. Now, any of my blind viewers are going to know what VoiceOver is because if they have an iPhone, they are definitely using it. So, to get to your VoiceOver settings, you're going to open up the settings app on your phone and choose accessibility and you'll find VoiceOver under the vision section. I'm going to do that now. Let me slow this speech down a little bit for you. There we go, that's a little bit better. Accessibility. Voiceover. Now my voiceover is on, so once you go in there, if yours is not on, you can toggle it on. And there's a lot of features in here that show you, that allow you to customize voiceover to work best for you. Uh, for the sake of time, the one we are looking for is the rotor option. Now, before I go any further, I want to explain to you what a rotor is. Imagine a dial on a radio. So, the way we simulate the radio dial on the screen is by putting two fingers on the screen like this and then rotating them. When we rotate our fingers, that puts, that changes the modes in voiceover. That can put it into various different modes. So think of it as turning a dial when we talk about the rotor. So I am going to go ahead and double tap on the rotor now. Oh, I already have actually. And the reason we double tap instead of single tap when voiceover is active, if we see, if single tap was still active, as we would put our finger on various parts of the screen, we would activate the icons. By changing this to operate in a double tap mode or a triple tap mode when voiceover is turned on, you can explore the screen freely without causing anything to happen. So if I want to activate something on the screen, I am going to give it a double tap instead of single tapping it. So I can put my finger on the choice, hear it spoken, and then I can double tap. So I have my Braille screen input. I've turned it off before I started doing the video. And if you explore this screen, you're going to find various options that you can turn on and off. And these are all options that can be found in the rotor. The one we are interested in is Braille screen input. I happen to know that's at the top for me because that's where I like it. So I'm just going to double tap it. And it says now that it is selected. Now, if I swipe right once, what that means, it says reorder Braille screen input. That allows me to put it in different locations in the rotor. Basically, I can, if it's at the top and I'm in an edit field, I can just use the rotor gesture one time and get to Braille screen input. If I put Braille screen input further down in the rotor, I might have to turn the rotor 
several times in order to get to it. So I'm going to leave mine set uh, and allow it to be at the top. So now that I have rail screen input selected and I have it at the top of my rotor, I'm just going to hit the back button to return to the previous okay. menu. Rail screen input, voiceover, back button, voiceover. Rotor. Now this is gonna put us of course back into voiceover settings and the next place we need to go is to the braille settings. Commands. And what it said after it said Braille, it said Focus, because that's the name of my Braille display that I have paired with this via Bluetooth. Even though I don't have it connected at this point, it knows that's the default display that I use. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on Braille, double tap on Braille. It's telling me that Bluetooth is off. That's because I have airplane mode on, so we don't get disturbed by phone calls or text messages. We don't want to turn that on. And the option we're looking here for here is Braille screen input. Input, Braille screen input, six dot. Okay, so we're at Braille screen input. We're going to tap on that, double tap. Selected, uncontracted six dot Braille. So right now it's set to uncontracted six dot Braille. So there's uncontracted Braille and there's contracted Braille. Contracted Braille takes advantage of short forms, basically, short form words. For example, the word like is spelled with the letter L. The word about is spelled with the letters A, B. So that is how uh, the short forms work, and that's a quick way of typing Braille. And the phone is actually smart enough to take those short forms and translate them into full words. Uh, we're not gonna go in depth into that today, for now, I'm going to set this into basic uncontracted six dot braille, which is basically there's no contractions, there's no short words, everything is going to have to be written out completely straightforward with no shortcuts. I'm working on a way to go through the braille alphabet and teach it to those who might be interested i just haven't got that all figured out yet but that's something that's coming up in the future so i'm going to keep this at uncontracted braille and we're just going to go back braille. Back braille. actually we can okay. just go we'll home we'll so no. yes no. we're going to go home to the main braille. home screen Six. Six. by swiping up from the bottom and at this point I am going to open up the notes application. Clock, 942p, iTunes store. Business folder, notes. And. Notes, notes note, text field, desired. Hello, how are you? Carry this is a previous Mr. note that I was working in earlier tonight when I was preparing to make this video. And what I'm going to do is I am going to put myself into Braille screen input and kind of show you how it works, but I'm going to do it slow so that you can hear everything that happens. Now there's two modes of Braille screen input. There's a tabletop mode that you basically can lay your phone down on the table and you'll have the dots on either side, or there's the mode that I like to use, which is called the screen away mode. And basically what that means is when I go into Braille screen input by turning my rotor one time in this edit field, Braille screen input, orientation log, landscape, screen away mode, six dot. It's saying that it's, so basically it's saying that it's in six dot mode and it is in screen away mode and that it's locked so it won't accidentally go into tabletop mode. And so now down the left side, uh, of course, if you're looking at it, it's going to be the reverse for you as far as the camera is concerned. But for me, the person entering Braille, I have dots one, two, three down the left hand side of my screen and four, five, six down the right hand side of my screen. Different combinations of these dots or numbers make up the Braille cell. There are six dots in a Braille cell. So for example, A is a dot one, E is a dot one, five. Uh, the letter O is a dot one three five. So as you can tell, there is a lot you have to memorize in order to use Braille. But 
Using Braille itself is not really what I'm planning to show you in this video. I just want to show you how the feature itself works. The first thing we have to do though, before we start to input Braille, is we have to train the screen to know where our fingers are located. So the way we do that, it's called a calibration and you're gonna to touch the screen with your right hand on the dots four, five, six. You're gonna release and then immediately touch with the three fingers on your left hand to make dots one, two, three. And we're going to do that now. Dot positions calibrated. It said dot positions calibrated. So it is now ready for input from my fingers at those locations. So I'm going to type, this is a test, and I'm gonna type it fairly slow so you can kind of hear the full effect of it. D H I S space I S space A space T E S T space test. So I type this as a test. If I made a mistake, I could erase one word by doing a two finger swipe left. Test. I could I can erase by a letter, basically backspace, by doing a one finger swipe left. Space. I'm going to type it back in again. So now I can go out of Braille screen input by twisting my rotor. And you see that the numbers have disappeared from the screen. It's just a regular screen now. And if I need to go back in real quick, I can put it right back there again and be ready to type. I know that there are going to be more questions. It's impossible to cover everything in something like this that, that everybody might be looking for. But I just wanted to provide something that was a bit more in depth than the 45 second video that I did previously. So if you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments.